this was very tough. I'm not gonna pretend like once I made my choice and knew that this was the right option, that this was easy for me. This was definitely the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. I have two other kids, Lucas, who's 23, and Jacob, who's 22. I love them so much. I mean, they're the center of my universe, and you know, without them, I feel like I would be nothing. It, you know, I wake up for them every day. I live for them. It was a very overwhelming feeling to find out at 41 that you're pregnant and you have two kids and how do you even tell your kids? You know, that was probably the most shameful part was having to look your kids in the face and tell them that this is the situation that I got myself into and not having an answer in the beginning about how we were going to live with this choice that I made. When I was 16, I found out I had polycystic ovarian syndrome. I knew from that point the adoption process might be an option in the future. We did infertility treatments from July of 2014 to July of 2016. We tried seven different times with the pills and the shots. I, I mean, yeah. at least I went through what's wrong with me. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of anger, like, at yourself. Sadness, obviously. And then when other people do get pregnant, you're just like, all right, well, I'm just going to probably avoid that situation for a while. Yeah. We live in Missouri. We live in a nice residential neighborhood, lots of kids. I was born and raised here. She's from Northern Iowa. She moved down here to go to college, and that's where we met. And we didn't leave. We finally came to the decision after we found out we weren't pregnant for the eighth time, which got harder and harder every time. We just were going to fundraise. We were going to spend as much money as we needed to have a 100% chance at a child. We know so many people in our community and we just told everyone what we were doing. And it wasn't that we were you know, asking for money or anything. It just turned out to all these people were coming in pouring in and supporting ideas for fundraisers and different things, that's what helped us. And I think that's where the transparency helped. Yeah. Like, hey, this is what's happening. Yeah. This is what we want, this is what we can't do ourselves. It was just comforting to know that adoption was available and that these parents wanted and longed for children for so long that my child would be safe, my child would have more opportunities, a better future, and the stability of having a home and having two parents that love him. Our baby is maybe not even conceived yet, and I just love them yeah. already. We have this hole in our hearts that we want to fill, and, and this is the way we're going to do it. I fell in love with their picture. They ask you to narrow it down to your top three. I had my top one. I knew right off the bat they were the ones. I think we were nervous at first. Everyone was nervous. Yeah, but as soon as we started talking to Sarah, she was very open and, and just very down to earth about everything. And we just started, we, we didn't even talk about the pregnancy at first. We just talked, talked about ourselves. And then we were making connections with each other. And you know, it was just very easy to get to know her. It just seemed like we really meshed. It was just a perfect fit. After meeting them, I didn't have any doubt in my mind about the adoption. I knew that Teddy was gonna have opportunities that 
I wouldn't be able to give him um, stability that of having two parents and just knowing he had two parents. Um, I was very comfortable with my choice and I knew I had made the right one. We actually took the opportunity to go down to Arizona at that time and go to some of her appointments. We stayed with some family down there and we actually hung out with her and her mom drove over from California and we met her mom and we met one of her met of her sons who lived in Arizona and you know just spent that time getting to know her and her family and it was, it was great. It was beautiful. Yeah. She had lots of ultrasounds because of her age. And we knew that he was a boy immediately because they had to do genetic testing at the beginning. We knew we had a boy from February on. Being able to get to know the family before he was born was just a really beautiful thing. We were all so invested. Sarah was invested. I was devastated. I was put right back in the same predicament as when I found out I was pregnant with him. I was scared. When they said the words, your adoption is put on hold, my instant thought was, how am I going to do this? I screamed at the top of my lungs. This can't be happening to me. It was awful. It was an awful experience. It was three months of, of waiting and, and I don't wish that on anybody. We knew that we loved this baby already and we knew that we loved Sarah and we waited it out. Even though we were not technically in a match, we asked Daisha to not put us back in the prospective birth mom pool yeah. because we were invested at that point. We were invested in that family and that baby because we all just wanted what was best for that baby in the end. After giving birth to him, I took him home from the hospital with me and I had him for the first 13 days. And I never was more scared in my whole life. The fear of bonding with him, the fear of changing my mind. How do you keep from bonding with somebody and loving somebody so much when they're there and they need you. All I could provide for him was me being scared, me, me not knowing how to take care of him. And that, that, that was tough. Those first 13 days were tough. It was hard being alone with him and trying to love him so much but keep my distance because he didn't belong to me. He wasn't mine to keep. So I think it was only like five days or so after he was born, we were able to get American Adoptions to uh, pay for a paternity test. I called Sammy and I told her he's excluded from being the father. 
And she screamed. <laughs> Coworkers were freaking out because I stood up apparently and uh, was freaking out, and they all knew because um, they, they, you know, they were very involved with the process as well. And so uh, um, I went, I went home, and we were on a plane within like ten hours. I was immediately happy for Sammy and Corby. I was immediately sad for myself. I had, I had bonded with the baby. I had fed him, I had changed his diapers. It, it wasn't because I didn't want him, it was because I wanted him to have everything. When we met Teddy for the first time, I remember we sat on that couch for hours just holding staring him and him. just staring at him. And, and um, Sarah was there, her family was there, and they were very supportive that whole time while we were doing that. And it just, that having that bonding, especially since we weren't there at birth, but it, you know, it didn't matter. We knew him since birth. We knew him since before birth, and it was great. Having that open relationship does create this extra feeling of being so happy that you finally have this baby that you've been dreaming of for five years, but being so sad for this person that you've come to love as a family member because she is so incredibly sad at the same time. It is the weirdest feeling, being that happy and that sad at the same time. Teddy is the happiest baby I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah. He's used to being the center of attention because he has four sets of grandparents who all spoil him incredibly. Yeah. The only time he's not happy is when it's time for bed. Yeah. We lay him down. He's like, no, you're supposed to hold me all the time. Yeah. And I would. <laughs> but I want to sleep too. <laughs> he likes music and he's trying to walk. He dances all the time. Anytime, if, if you sing a song or start to sing a song or he hears any music, he's bopping up and down, just <laughs> dancing. Say hi, Sarah. We miss you. Yeah. I would say Teddy does have a little bit of an understanding of the adoption um, and his birth family because he we, vi we video chat with um, Sarah and he recognizes her. Whenever the phone's on, he knows that's Sarah and he may not at this point know exactly who she is, but he's understanding of her family and of her. She visits twice a year. Yep. So at Christmas time and his birthday, uh, we will either go to her or she will come to us. We already have a plan to go to Disneyland when he gets old enough because that's her favorite place on earth. Yeah. So we're all gonna take him together. Yeah. Well, I think our story is very unique. They're my best friends. They are amazing people. I love our relationship. I couldn't have asked for more. I feel very fortunate. Every time I see Teddy, it's more confirming for me that I made the right choice. That I have ultimately done what was best for him. I 
Adoption is beautiful because of the family you earn and the love that is gained. We didn't just adopt a baby, we adopted his whole family. His grandma, his grandpa, his mom, his two brothers. It's just really beautiful, because I didn't expect that at all. Our life is more full. It's just richer. <laughs>